Praise the Lord, saints, hallelujah to the Most High God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Almighty God, and the flesh, hallelujah, seated at the Father's right hand. Praise His holy name today. Praise His holy name. I want to say here at the beginning, you know, my wife and I, we love the Lord, and we've been preaching the gospel together since we've been married, going on 20 years. And we are not ashamed, not ashamed at all to be following the Lord and being sanctified more and more every day as we surrender to the Lord. And today the Lord, you know, he wants us to remember that his people who are walking by his spirit need not be ashamed of the gospel at all because if we're ashamed of the gospel there's something going on in our life that we need the Holy Spirit to reveal to us if we're ashamed of the ministers of the Lord and the messages that are being put out by God's ministers in the earth today there's something going on in the heart that we need the Holy Spirit to reveal to us why we would be ashamed of the messengers of God or the messages that are going forth. This is a very heart-searching matter because it has a lot to do with the warfare that we are in. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this word, Father, and I praise you and worship you today, and I thank you for what you are going to reveal this morning. I thank you, Lord, that you are the mighty God. You are the one who is seated on the throne of heaven. Heaven is your throne. Heaven is your throne, Lord. And man will never find out how big heaven is. And that's your throne. And the earth is your footstool. And today you walk this earth in your people. You are in us. Holy Spirit, you have been poured out upon all flesh. And those people who reject you, those people who harden their hearts toward you, oh, I know it grieves you, Holy Spirit. And when they do that, they have to suffer the consequences of their actions. And I thank you right now, Father, for your grace to all of your children that you have chosen us. And you've given us your grace to respond to you, Lord, in faith and belief. And you've showered your goodness on us unto repentance and to new birth, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Keep us ever in the narrow way today. Help us to continually look to you knowing that, yes, the way is hard. Yes, we do suffer tribulation in this world. But be of good cheer, you said, for I have overcome the world. Father, I bless you today and thank you. I just so thank you and love you, Father. We, we, we just praise and worship you today in the beauty of holiness. We know that you are vanquishing the enemy on the right hand and on the left by your righteousness, by your truth, by your justice. We thank you that your word says many, many times that you love judgment. Oh God, help us never, ever, ever to be ashamed of your word or of your messengers. And as we get into the word, Lord, give us revelation. Give us understanding. And bring conviction to our hearts where we need it, Lord. And crush the devil and put him under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to begin right here in the book of Genesis chapter 2. In the book of Genesis chapter 2. It says in verse 25, And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. They were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Okay? They were not ashamed of being naked. Hallelujah. Now, you go to chapter 3, 
And you see here, and when the woman, verse 6, saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Why would they do that? To cover their nakedness. How come? Why? And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord called, the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? <laughs> Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou sh shouldest not eat? And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Oh, there's so much here. Look at that. See verse 25 again of chapter 2. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. They, they had no shame. But when they fell, when they sinned, they were ashamed. They saw their nakedness. They were ashamed. They were disobedient to God and they were ashamed. They, they lost the battle right there in the garden. They lost the battle against the devil. Because they relied upon their own reason, their own thinking. And lust, when it has conceived, bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth what? Death. Now today, we are born anew. We know the rest of the story that God said to the serpent. You're cursed. You're going to crawl on your belly. And he's going to put enmity, hostility between. Let me read that right here. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed. Above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go. And dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity. That's hostility. Between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And there's the first mention of the virgin birth right there. Of the crucifixion of the Lord. Who we know was not ashamed. Jesus was never ashamed. Never. He despised the shame. <laughs> he endured the suffering in the cross. Despising the shame. He was not ashamed. You know why? Because he never was in sin. See, when people are ashamed of the gospel, they're ashamed of the messengers of God. There's something going on in their heart Okay, that's causing them, they're believing the lie of Satan that says, you're, you're gonna, people are not going to like you if you associate yourself with Paul the Apostle. Don't hang around Paul. At the end of Paul's life, he was all, almost all alone. Everybody had forsook him, he said. Demas left him because he loved this present world. Forsook Paul. He was ashamed. 
Paul said in to Timothy <coughs> in two Timothy one eight be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony let me let me go there in my scripture turn over I got it listed here on the e sword I'm going to turn over in my Bible because there's some verses before that we need to read because it ties together in the context hallelujah and we like to give the whole counsel of God and I don't know of very many I know a couple of preachers that are coming to mind right now that I, I know are solid men of God women of God know some women of God but I don't know very many out there because people like to take everything piecemeal they like to stay with one thing prophecy and they don't like the prophecies of Jeremiah <laughs> no they'll stick with the the current prophecy God gives them that sounds so uh, wonderfully always full of something that just tantalizes the ears of people okay this is what they're doing today I was talking about that yesterday a little bit but this message here we got to stick with this right now Paul says here hallelujah verse 6 of 1 Timothy 1 2 Timothy 1 wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands okay now when you got saved and filled with the Spirit of God hopefully you went and got baptized because that's a command of the Lord to be baptized if you haven't been baptized in water then you need to be baptized in water okay you need to be baptized in water when the Ethiopian eunuch was saved he believed Philip said he said there's water what's to stop me from being baptized and Philip said do you believe and he said yes I believe and so Philip took him down in the water and baptized him okay so I'm not saying you're not a believer but I'm telling you if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and filled with the Spirit of God you must be baptized okay so when you're baptized somebody's got their hands on you they're 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 praying for you and you're baptized in the name of the Father the Son and Holy Ghost the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah and you come out of that water and you have received the gift of the Holy Spirit okay the Holy Spirit you have the Holy Spirit you know it that's the gift the Holy Ghost stir up the gift he said fan the flame of the Holy Spirit and we don't do it by walking in the broad way okay we do it by walking the narrow way hallelujah being not ashamed listen wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands for God hath not given us the spirit of fear the spirit of fear that's why people are ashamed because they're afraid they're fearful but of power and of love and of a sound mind oh hallelujah be not thou therefore, verse 8, ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. So many Christians are ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Nor of me, his prisoner. Paul said, nor of me. Don't be ashamed of me either. See, we say that too to people. Don't be ashamed of us. People are ashamed when, when there's people preaching the truth of God's word. They're ashamed to, to sometimes associate with them for whatever reason. It's because something's going on in their heart that's not of God. And it must be sought out. In faith by the Holy Spirit. You must get to the Holy Spirit. Go to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, show me what it is. <coughs> show me what it is. 
Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. According to the power of God. Now, thank you, Father. Let me get a drink of water. Now, according to the power of God, when I read that, the Holy Spirit said, go over here. So I'm going right over here to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. For the preaching of the cross, verse 18. And that word preaching is logos, the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and God was the word, the word. For the word, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Foolishness to them that perish. So many believers who say they believe and feel with it, say they have the Holy Spirit and they're going to these churches out there in, in the United States and, and some of the Western nations and now in the Eastern nations where they brought the corrupted gospel and they stay away from the cross. It's foolishness. Oh yeah, Jesus died on the cross to save me from my sin and now he says I'm blessed and, and they quote the scripture out of Romans 8 but all things are given to me because... You know, Jesus did that, and I have all, and they, you have the faith, name it and claim it gospel, and you have all these different gospels. You have the universal gospel. Don't worry about it. Just uh, have a grace party and sit around and drink and get stoned out of your mind. You have, you have all these different gospels out there today that are ashamed of the cross. Where we die... With Christ, he died there, we were with him. He represented us, he took us to the cross. But it doesn't end there. Now we are resurrected in newness of life, hallelujah. Because we believe. And it's a daily walk. One day at a time. Hallelujah. For the preaching, the word of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Look at verse 8 again. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we must be obedient servants unto the Lord. And you do that by the love increasing in you. The love of the Lord increasing in you. We are obedient because he first loved us. And then we reciprocate that love. The agapeo love by being obedient to him and doing what he says in our heart we must do that god has written his law in our heart the holy spirit speaks to us in our heart in our spirit man and he teaches us how to make the soul man of us the psyche of us be subservient unto the spirit man where god directs Hallelujah. Because the soul man wants to rule. See, that's what happened in the garden. Man was using his reason. She was looking at the tree. See, in, in chapter 5 of Genesis, God said he named them Adam. See, we got to remember, woman was taken out of the side of man. Okay? She wasn't made of the dust of the ground like Adam was. She was taken out of Adam. So they're one, you see. And they were not ashamed. They were naked and they were not ashamed. But when they sinned, they were ashamed. So if you're ashamed today, if, if I'm ashamed about something today, the truth, in some way, there's something going on in me. I got to get with God. I got to say, Lord, search me out. 
Make me not ashamed, O God. Hallelujah. Because I'm telling you right now, when the persecution breaks out in the streets of America, in the countries, in the counties, in the cities, they're coming after the true believers. And how many Christians think they're walking a full walk with the Lord, but they're not? They're, they're toe deep, toe deep in the river. I mean, they're not even to the ankles. I mean, they're just right there on the very edge, and the water's just right, right even with their toes. Is that person going to be able to stand? When the Lord says, come out into the middle of the river where it's a river to swim in. And let me be the director of your life. Let me take your life and direct it the way I want it to go. Hallelujah. God means us no harm. God wants to praise. I mean, God wants to, to shower us with his goodness. God wants to fill us to overflowing with his life. Where every place that we go in the physical realm on this earth, there will be a difference when we get there. Something will happen. Things will change. The principalities and powers will take notice. Because the Lord is in us. Not anything we've done, but all that he has done. We cannot be ashamed of the gospel. I'm going to read verse 18 again because this is so powerful. The church today in America for the most part is missing it. We are the victorious ones. How many times I do I, I'm going to say it every broadcast. We are the giants. It's a spiritual kingdom that Jesus is. I mean, Jesus is that kingdom. He is the spiritual kingdom. And God's people are being patterned, fashioned after his image. And he rules the universe in all of its parts. He fills the universe in all of its parts. In him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And he wants to use us as vessels that he can flow through. Hallelujah. We have nothing, absolutely not one thing to fear from man or from the devil, from the world, from the flesh. Nothing to fear. It's time for the church to begin to really, really, really believe. Stop saying they believe, but really believe, and that will be reciprocated. Hallelujah. That will be not reciprocated, but that will be shown forth in the action. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look. For the preaching, the word, the logos of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us, which are saved, it is the power of God. The communion of the word, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh and his cross. That principle, self-denial, is the power of God. You want to walk in the power today? You say you're, you don't have no power let me tell you what's interrupting that power flow in your life today. It's your flesh. You're trying to walk by your reason. You're trying to understand the things of God. You're trying to, to put the things of God in your understanding where you can assimilate it, where you can dissect it and file it. To be used for your purpose. And that is the flesh. And God says in Proverbs 3. Lean not unto your own understanding. Ha <laughs> ha. See. I mean we rack our brains. In, in the, the Christian church today is just overloaded. With trying to figure it out. We were talking to a dear sister yesterday, telling her about some people we know that, you know, they, they, they speculate about the word of God. What's God mean there? What does that mean? And it's always a, a coming up short of the fullness. 
And that's just what the devil wants. When you come into the fullness, you know it is true. Remember on the day of Pentecost, Peter didn't say, well, maybe this is what Joel the prophet was talking about. You know, in the book of Joel. Let me let me go get that scroll and read that. Let me figure this out and see if that's what was Joel was talking about. No, he didn't say that. He said, this is that which was spoken by Joel the prophet. Okay. That's what he said. He was absolute truth. No speculation. Why is it the church today speculates? Because they're ashamed. Because they love their flesh. They love the good life. That's why. They're not totally surrendered and sold out to the Lord. That's why. <coughs> We're totally surrendered. As far as I can tell... But let me tell you something. I say that, and and then I go, oh, my spirit man goes, e, you know, my, I, 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 because I know the Lord. He'll show me. He'll say, John, what about that? Look at that attitude. Look at the way you're thinking. You see, John, the way you're thinking right now is causing this to happen to you, and this to happen to you, and it's keeping you back from this that I want to do, or that what I want to do. There ain't nobody perfect except Jesus Christ. And I'm thanking the Lord every day that the Holy Spirit is working in our lives to keep us walking in the narrow way because the temptation is to get on the broad way. Saints, I'm telling you. It's easier on the broad way. But God says, stay the course, stay the course, stay the course because I have work to do through you. I have work to do through you. Fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not what man will do. Fear not anything that the world can do. Fear not anything, your circumstances. Fear not anything. Fear only me, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Paul says in 2 Tim, two Tim let me just read this. I'm going to read this here. I'm going to read this again, and then I'm going to go back over to 2 Timothy. For the preaching of the cross, the word of the cross, remember, that word, that, that word preaching there is logos. The word of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us, <laughs> which are saved, he didn't say might be saved, like the false lying teachers tell you. Okay, the Bible bashers. That's what they say. You're not going to know you're saved until the very end. Liars. Damnation written on their forehead. For the word of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. That principle, that's the power of God. Oh, hallelujah. You walk a crucified life today, saints. That's what we're going to do by the grace of God. It's all by the grace of God that he keeps us. And we walk a crucified life. Ain't none of us can stand before God. There's no flesh can glory in his presence. None of us can stand before God and say, I did it. That's bull. That's bull. It's all because of what he did. Oh, hallelujah. He gets all the glory, and rightfully so. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. When you read those, those uh, letters to the churches in Revelation, you look at all the rewards, hallelujah, of, of doing what the Lord says and walking as he says to walk, which is the way he walked. As the Father sent me, so send I you. You just get so blessed. Knowing one day he's going to give you a white stone with a name written on it that only you know. Wow. See? Something that he knows about you, that he's worked into you, some sort of reflection of character that he is pleased with because you've surrendered to him. And he'll inscribe it on a white stone and give it to you. All because of his mercy and grace. 
all because of his great love for us. Oh, we need to reciprocate that love back to God. And we do that by loving one another. Hallelujah. By expressing the love one to another, not being ashamed of one another. Hallelujah. I'm going to begin in verse 6 again. Chapter 1, 2 Timothy. I love this letter because Paul was at the end of his life. He was in prison. He was chained. He was very near death in this life. He wrote to Timothy. He loved Timothy. And I, I know Paul loved us too. He laid... He, he, Surely he thought about the, the time to come, you know. He didn't know how long it would be. But he did such a wonderful surrender unto the Lord by God's grace that the Lord used him in such a mighty way to pen all these epistles, revealing all the, all the insight and rhema and revelation of, of the Lord. Hallelujah. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Hallelujah. And of love, and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God who hath saved us. Oh, hallelujah. And called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Oh man, that is so powerful. Hallelujah. Man, praise God. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath, H-A-T-H, -H, hath, who hath abolished death. Oh, praise God. Praise God. I mean, we get so filled with the Holy Ghost when we come to that last breath of our life. We're not going to be afraid. We're going to be joyful. Praise God. Oh, praise the Lord. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, through the message, through the good message, hallelujah, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. Oh, hallelujah. Paul wasn't afraid to say it, neither are we. God's appointed us to preach the word, hallelujah. And speak it forth with boldness. Hallelujah. All outspokenness, frankness, bluntness. If you feel like when we're preaching, you're being slapped upside the head or hit in the face, that's because the Holy Spirit's doing it. Or you get a gut shot. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Ghost wants to wake you up. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Oh, hallelujah. Woo, the Lord's given us great strength today by this message. <laughs> it's because of preaching the cross. Hallelujah. Preaching the truth of the gospel. Praise God. Hallelujah. Woo! Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. Ha <laughs> ha. 
for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Oh, praise God. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Oh, hallelujah. We are persuaded too. And I want to be more persuaded. I want to be more surrendered. I want to be more in love with the master. Hallelujah. And just crawl up in his lap every day and just talk to him. Hallelujah. And pour my heart out before him. Don't be afraid to tell Jesus anything you want to tell him. Okay? Because as the words roll off your tongue, he's listening. The Holy Spirit will quicken in you. He will begin to chisel. He will begin to sand. He will begin to polish. He will begin to reveal things to you about Christ that are so beautiful that you'll just, the old man will just begin to just fade away. Just You'll, you'll just know that it's, it's being subdued now. My iniquity is being subdued. Hallelujah. The Lord's casting it as far as the east is from the west from me and to the depths of the sea. Hallelujah. And you'll know more. We'll all know more. Hallelujah. So Paul said, ha, that is so powerful. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher, an apostle, and teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. Praise God. For I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. You know, God is so awesome. Let me tell you how awesome God is. In, in this one area. God's so awesome. He's awesome in every area. But you know. When 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 you when you talk to the Lord. And you speak to the Lord. When, when I do. I get a little personal here. And the Lord gives me a message. And little do I know. The message is directly for me. Not only for you. But I mean he's like he's speaking right to us. Right here in this house. And we can hear his voice. And it's very wonderful because you know he's thinking about you. And the thoughts he thinks toward us are good thoughts. To give us that expected end that he so desires. And it increases the faith of Christ in us. Hallelujah. And then he says, Hold fast the form of sound words, -wee, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. I wrote a big yes, Lord, right here. I'm telling you, I've read one Second Timothy, I don't know how many times. But today, it is so living. Speaking right to our need right here in this house. And I praise God, I know it's speaking to some of your needs out there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in us. Oh, hallelujah. We got to guard it. Keep it. Hallelujah. This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Phagellus and Hermogenes, Hermogenes. The Lord have mercy. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus. For he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. Hallelujah. There's a dear brother. Ones Sephorus. Who was not ashamed of Paul's chain. But
But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. Oh, hallelujah. Here's a man that loved the Lord and he loved Paul. And we know we have some friends that love the Lord and they love us, genuinely love us. We know that. And we are so thankful unto God for that. And our prayers go up daily for the saints of the Most High God. And those that are close to us, we pray for daily. We pray for the whole body. And the Lord is doing a work in this hour that will, if he told us what it was, we would not believe him. I don't. That's why, you know, we, we say, Lord, what are you doing? What are you, this is a common theme with the believers today, the remnant who are not associated with the whole religious system of the world, but are walking with Christ. What are you doing, Lord? What are you doing? And the Lord reveals day by day what he's doing. Just a little bit, day by day. Today he's revealing to me and my wife here He's showing us we've been ashamed. Lord, forgive us. Because we we have a grumbling spirit sometimes. Lord, have mercy. And he does. I can feel his love just pouring in. He's washing it all away. Hallelujah. This is a revolutionary message for us. Hallelujah. Revolutionary. Not ashamed. Not ashamed any longer. Ever, ever. Hallelujah. So in the forest, he, he was not ashamed. Paul said, he oft refreshed me. Oh, yeah. We get that too from the saints. When people write us and, and communicate to us how the Lord's touching them through the word, it refreshes us. Hallelujah. Oh, what a wonderful beauty that is. Hallelujah. And then Paul said, but when he was but when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. And in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. This man, Onesiphorus, he ministered to Paul. He helped Paul. Hallelujah. And, and he, he oft refreshed him. Hallelujah. Be not ashamed. I want to read some, some psalms to you now, okay? I, I recommend that, saints, I know, Sheridan and I both know how hard it is sometimes to pray, okay? And it's, it's don't be overly concerned that it's hard but what you do is you get in the word you pray the psalms okay pray the psalms you turn to the psalms let's just turn over to psalm 25 i've got it here on my esau i want to go over there on in the bible here because the lord wants you to be refreshed today and and if you don't know how to pray you don't know how to talk to god today this is how you do it. You just open up Psalm 25. It's a Psalm of David. You know, there's there's so much word. Saints, we could read the word every day, all day, and never get out of it everything there is in it because there's so much. Okay. If you want to know the life of David, you start in uh, in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, and you start reading there. And you see the end of Saul's reign, and then Samuel goes and anoints David. Okay, and you begin to read about all that David went through, and the tribulation it says in Samuel that David suffered. And David was had the Holy Spirit. I mean, he was filled. I mean, he, he the Holy Spirit came upon him when the oil was poured on him by Samuel the prophet. He was chosen of God. We all know about his flub ups and his sin, but God's grace was with David. He's a he's an example to us of God's grace coming to us. 
Never doubt the grace of God. Never be ashamed of it. Hallelujah. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. That's what David says. O God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Hallelujah. See, let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let none that wait on thee be ashamed, O Lord, today. That's what we pray. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Let them be ashamed, O God. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Oh, hallelujah. We pray that, and then the Lord starts taking us down a hard road sometimes. And you say, wait a minute, Lord. And Jesus says, I had a hard time. It was hard for me, you know. Putting up with all those wagging tongues at me. It was hard for me. Praise the Lord. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth. And teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses, for they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions, according to thy mercy. Remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Oh, good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. Oh, hallelujah. Don't know which way to go today, saints? God says he will teach you in the way to choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Oh, hallelujah. Turn unto me. Turn thee unto me, and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Oh, bring thou me out of my distresses. Look upon mine affliction and my pain, and forgive all my sins. Consider mine enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Redeem Israel, O oh God. Out of all his troubles. You want to know how to pray? Pray Psalm 25. It's powerful, isn't it? Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Look at verse 20 again. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed. For I put my trust in thee. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Psalm 37, 19 says, They shall not be ashamed in the evil time and in the days of famine. They shall be satisfied. God's people, those who seek him, love him. Psalm 86, 17. Show me a token for good. This is a prayer now. You want to pray? You want to learn how to pray? Read the Psalms. Show me a token for good, that they which hate me may see it and be ashamed. 
because thou, Lord, has hope in me and comforted me. That's another thing I noticed in this study this morning is, is that the wicked are ashamed. See? So, if, if I'm ashamed of my brother or my sister in Christ, then I'm doing wickedly. Okay? Now, the Lord, He does not smile on sin okay god does not smile on sin if a brother or a sister that we know sins we know of the sin we go to that brother and sister we we speak the truth to them they 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 must be confronted about that and the lord's given us discernment and we can discern things in the spirit when people are doing stuff, we know, we see the signs and the Lord reveals to us something's going on. And so we know it. So we begin to pray. And then that person generally will come to us and, and share what's been happening. And we pray with them and get victory, see. Because when you, I mean, when, when someone's talking to you all the time, we minister to so many young people and people our age. And in between, and 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 minister, 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 and then it's like they disappear, and you know something's going on. They're ashamed. They're ashamed because they didn't surrender. And it's not the time to kick them down and stop them in the in the face. Okay, no, you want to pick them up. You want to help them get up, stand up. But they're ashamed, and rightfully so, because that's what it says. Show me a token for good, that they which hate me may see it and be ashamed, because thou, Lord, hast opened me and comforted me. Psalm 119, verse 80. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes. Oh, you, you want to know how to pray? Go read Psalm 119 today. 178 verses. Read it. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes, that I be not ashamed. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Psalm 119, 116. Uphold me according unto thy word, that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus is our hope. He's the blessed hope. Oh, praise God. Uphold me according unto thy word that I may live and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Oh, praise God. See, our God is so faithful. We're in such a warfare that the church is today. And we have the victory now. We have it right now. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ. And we walk knowing we have the victory. We walk circumspectly in this earth today, submitting ourselves one to another in the fear of God side by side, not lording over one another and helping one another, lifting up each other's arms. When we see needs, whatever they are, we, we try to meet them the best we can. We pray, we seek the Lord, we give, we do what God tells us to do as the body of Christ one for another and for the poor out there in the world. And let me tell you, people out there in the world, there's a lot of people that have a lot of this world's goods, but let me tell you, they're poor. They have not Jesus. They're poor. They think they, they've got a lot of this world's goods, but they need Jesus. They need Jesus. Because they're, they're blind by the devil. And then they're ignorant of their condition. And we pray the Holy Spirit will quicken today, many like that. Be encouraged today, saints of the Most High God, that, that the Lord our God, He is the King. Remember when Jesus was standing on the shore and the apostles went out fishing, seven of them. Peter said, I go a fishing. I mean, Peter's like, okay, well, I'm going to go fishing now. The Lord might not have appeared to him for a few days or something. And Peter's kind of restless, got to be doing something. I'm going to go fishing. 
so their fishing didn't catch a thing. The Lord made it be so. So they see someone standing on the beach, you know, a couple hundred yards, three or four hundred yards away or whatever. And he says, have you caught anything? And they said, no, I don't, we ain't caught nothing. He said, throw the net on the other side of the boat. So they did. They heard that before. They did. They drew in 153 fish. <laughs> Praise God. And John says, it's the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. He knew who it was. And Peter didn't even get dressed. He just dove right in the water. See, are we hungry like that for God today? Can we come before God today with an open heart? And just, and just say, oh Lord, this is how I am. Take me and use me for your glory. And he says, okay. And when he says, okay, don't be ashamed any longer. Let's not be ashamed any longer. And let's just walk with him. No matter what happens, no matter how hard or how smooth the way might be, just say, thank you, God. Bless you, Lord. We praise and worship you. George Mueller, he, he so praised God when he received 10 shillings. He just worshiped God and thanked God for those 10 shillings. You read the story, there were like six years there where every day they had, God just met the need by the hour, man. And he was so thanking God for that little bitty shilling. <laughs> and he learned through that time when the big gifts started coming, thousand pounds, which today is like, you know, $15,000 money or whatever. I don't know how much it would be today. But it was, you know, a lot. He praised God the same. Hallelujah. It was no difference. And that's how we all want to be. We want to thank God and worship Him in beauty of holiness when the time is hard. And we want to worship Him when the time is not so hard. When He gives a time of refreshing under the apple tree. We thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we bless you today for this word, and we so thank you, God. I just so thank you, God. I do pray for the saints of the Most High God today, Lord, oh God. I pray for my wife. I pray for all the believers, Lord. We're all together, Lord. That you strengthen us in the palms of your hands, oh God, today. That you envelop us with your awesome fire and love, oh God. Hallelujah. You continue to do the exploits you want to do. Oh, God, you move mightily in the earth through your body today, oh, God. Through families, oh, God. Through workplaces, oh, God. Through cities and counties and states, Lord, and, and nations, oh, God. You have your way today, oh, Lord. You crush every work of darkness, oh, God. Hallelujah, oh, Jehovah. You are the victor. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Split the eastern sky, oh, God, and come. Touch the mountains and they will smoke oh god hallelujah today we worship you lord we worship you we thank you let your people experience your awesome fire today as never before all of us and crush the devil put him under our feet in jesus name amen hallelujah praise the living god today hallelujah you want to contact this ministry, you want to contact Sharon or I, and, um, just contact us at Behold a New Thing at Yahoo.com. Behold a New Thing at Yahoo.com. The Lord says, Behold, I do a new thing. <laughs> Shall you not see it? <laughs> Are you not going to perceive it? That's what he says in Isaiah. And so, Behold a New Thing at Yahoo.com is the contact information. And we just bless God for the opportunity to witness and to testify to his goodness. He's doing the work. Let us remain faithful to him. No matter how hard the way, just bless his holy name and thank him. And never, never, never be ashamed. Not ashamed today. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for your forgiveness for us. Repenting today of, of, of times we have been ashamed. Thank you, God. Thank you for forgiving us. Oh, we know it by faith you have forgiven us because your word says if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. And we thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his holy face to shine upon you. The Lord our God lift up his holy countenance upon you and grant you peace. Oh, hallelujah. His name, authority, and character be upon your life today. All who he is be in you and fill you to overflowing. Fill us, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen.